Hi, I'm Danny Nightmare. I'm Gory B. Movie. And we're Horror Addicts. And today, we're going to go see The Nun. So, The Nun. It's the latest in the Conjuring series. The movie's about the Warrens, and then they go on investigate stuff. And then one time, there was a nun. And this is the spinoff of that story. Wait, it's our second spinoff, too, because they also have the Annabelle movies. And I'll be honest with you guys, I know most of you love these movies. They are very, very popular. That's why they keep making them. But... I'm really not a fan, and, uh... No, Yeah, Danny it. isn't either. Though I will say, Annabelle 2 was pretty good. It was alright. With that in mind, my expectations for this are very low. Here's what I'm excited about, though. I love Thaisa Vermiga. She's amazing. She was great in The Final Girls. She was great in American Horror Story. I'm really looking forward to seeing her in this movie. I'm just glad she's getting work, because she deserves it. My expectations on this movie, though, are... slim to none. <laughs> I will say Valak, the nun, is pretty creepy, and the reviews I've been hearing, I haven't looked too deep into them, have been mixed, but a lot of people have said they were really surprised by how good this movie was, so hopefully we will be as well, but you'll find out after we see the movie. So, actually that wasn't that bad. It really wasn't, but keep in mind that our expectations were very low, so it's going to be very different than for somebody who was very hyped to see this movie or who was a big fan of the franchise. Yeah, they might feel completely different about it. One of the things that we really don't like about the Conjuring movies is we don't like the Warrens. Mm -mm. They are very, very preachy. I mean, they're mm -hmm. very Catholic. That's part of their thing. Yeah, those movies kind of beat it over your head. You know, Christianity good, witchcraft bad, and I'm not into that. This movie is The Nun, and it is very religious, so I expected that, and I feel like it wasn't so forced. Like, it is part of the plot, and it felt more natural. Plus, there's a priest in this movie, but I actually like him. He's way less preachy than the Warrens. Yeah. Oddly enough, even though this movie is about a nun, it takes place largely in an abbey, it was still less preachy than Conjuring 1 and 2. And all the religious stuff made sense. It wasn't just, like, somebody's idea being thrown in my face. It's just the setting, and I accepted that, and I liked it. The biggest thing I liked about this movie were the characters, and I think the movie is strongest when you have the three main characters, the priest who, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, Frenchie, who is a villager who knows the area and takes them to the abbey, and Thaisa Formiga's character, who is a nun who has yet to take her vows. When the three of them are on screen together, they are perfect. Thaisa Formiga is very likable, very ingenue, very, you know, final girly. The priest is kind of your straight man. He's the Giles who knows everything. And Frenchie is comic relief and he is perfect. He, he speaks for the audience, I think. Um, he says what most people would say, like on screen. Yeah. He's not religious, so if you're not religious, you would probably latch onto his ideas more. And yeah, I just liked him. He's also French Canadian, which yes. is less romantic, but whatever. I like the guy. I liked him a lot. There were numerous places where everyone in the theater laughed out loud. And on the reverse side of that, I think the movie is at its weakest when the characters are separated. For much of the second act, the three of them are separated throughout the Abbey. The priest has a storyline with a child he tried to perform an exorcism on. That whole storyline was completely uninteresting to me. Frenchie is separated. He does all right on his own, but than the other two. And Hayes and Formiga's character is stuck in the abbey with a whole bunch of nuns. And it's okay, but they do best when they have each other to play off of. They do reunite for the third act, and that's when things kind of get back on track. As far as scares in this movie go, Valak looks great. You're not gonna get much Valak though until that third act. She uh, is kind of a watered-down deadite, which I like, and not as great or as funny as a deadite, but there's some similarities in the way that she haunts and scares people and looks. Uh I enjoyed that. My biggest complaint with the scares is they really overused CGI in this movie. Also, I will say a lot of the scares don't make a whole lot of sense. This is one of those ones where you're just gonna have to chalk it up to movie because there's really no explanation for why Valak can do some pretty insane things. Her powers fluctuate and there's really no explanation on how they work. Sometimes it's like, well, if she could do that, why are they still alive? Like, why don't she just yeah. kill them? Yeah, she seems at some points all powerful. At other points, it seems like, why can't you just kill them? You're Valak, you do all these crazy magical things. But like I said, our expectations were low, so I didn't expect this to be the best written thing ever. What I will give it props to, as far as the writing goes, is the dialogue and like I said, the characters. That's that's great. As far as 
years ago. No, I didn't think this was a scary movie. This is kind of more of a fun slumber party movie. You know, I think especially like younger audiences, like teenagers are probably going to really enjoy this. But if you're really into this franchise, it might be a bit of a letdown for you. Yeah, because the other ones, I feel like they take themselves too seriously. Yes. But that's just our opinion on it. Some people like that. Some people want very serious scare that's all build and all that stuff so you might be disappointed this one is a little more lighthearted, a little more fun the body count is still pretty low which is pretty on par with these movies there is some good amount of gore here and there though it's not like you're you'll still get some blood and the settings are phenomenal this was all filmed in romania transylvania it's amazing the abbey is gorgeous just for the views you're going to see mm -hmm. in this film alone that makes it worth seeing on the big screen i don't think you have to run out and see it but i certainly appreciated the gorgeous settings in this film yeah it's definitely my favorite setting that they've ever had uh the castle looks great so the abbey it's all good stuff. Going back to scares a little bit, a lot of it also has to do with pacing. This is filmed more like your slumber party movie. It's a lot of jump scares and that works for some horror movies. I'm not against jump scares so long as they fit the film. This movie had kind of a cool gothic thing going on. I think had they paced it out more slowly and let that suspense build, it could have been really creepy and really scary. But a lot of times they just went for the jump scare and it wasn't nearly as effective as it could have been. So maybe to be effective with the really slow pacing, they would have had to tone down the fun. And I think that maybe the sacrifice is okay, that it's more like the silly scare, because I like the attitude this movie have. In fact, I haven't seen nuns fly around like that since Problem Child, and <laughs> I really enjoy that part of it, so. <laughs> and of course, you know, this ties into the franchise, um, as you're going to expect after seeing Animal Creation, that does happen here. And I won't spoil it for you, but I will say I was very disappointed. I felt like it was handed to them, the connection. You know, Thaisa Formiga's character is Catholic and she has visions. And she is played by the younger sister of Vera Formiga, who is one of the Warrens. Who also has visions. And is also very Catholic. I feel like it would have been easy just to say that those two characters were related, oh. but that's not what they ended up doing. And what they did was kind of a retcon. They go back and show you something that didn't actually happen when you saw that movie the first time and changed a couple things to make it work. It's okay. It's not bad, but I would have loved to see a connection between Vera and Thaisa in a movie. So one poster before we went and saw this said National Treasure, and it was kind of making fun of that. I didn't get what that was referencing until we saw the movie. There is like a religious artifact, but I thought it was a little more from the Indiana Jones type, the way they put it in there. And for me, it worked. I could see why some people would make fun of that, though. But eh, like I said, it all fit the tone for me. It's pretty goofy. This is a slumber party movie. If you go into it expecting a slumber party movie, something that you would have loved when you were 14, or if you are 14, something Thing that you would love to watch with your friends. This is exactly that movie. And if that's what you want, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. So I do recommend it as a fun date movie because we went out on a date and we had fun. And we saw our sister, mm -hmm. uh, my sister-in-law, Sierra, and she was also on a date and she also had a good time. So that's two reviews for the price of one. No waiting. And I'll tell you that it got kind of a cheering ovation when it ended. So the crowd was really into it. The crowd was great. It was a packed house. People laughed throughout. There was a few people who got surprised during the jump scares, but in that way that's fun, like at a haunted house. Uh, overall, the mood in the theater was people were having a really good time. So if you like these vlog reviews, please hack that thumbs up button and subscribe and ring that bell to stay notified. Thanks for watching. Cut! Cut. <laughs>